Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to iTouch App Reviewers. This video is actually a request uh, from a viewer and honestly, I think it's a good idea. Uh, I was kind of thinking about this um, beforehand, but this is going to be hopefully very helpful for those of you who are in college, high school, or even just out in the world looking for a new laptop. So today's video is going to cover the MacBook Air versus the MacBook Pro. Which one should you get considering They've both recently been updated. You know, you got the brand new MacBook Airs here and then the MacBook Pros, which have been out for just a couple months now. Which one is better for you? So let's start off with going over some of the specs. If you watched my last video, uh, you guys have already gone over this, so you can probably skip ahead a little bit, but if not, you might wanna just listen to this and kind of understand what's going on. So MacBook Air comes in three colors, right? So you've got space gray, gold, and silver, classic silver. So I think most people are gonna go for one of these colors. I think space gray is going to still be the preferred color by most people, but I think a lot of girls might want this gold color. Um, guys might as well, but just know that it's more of a rose gold color. Um, if you can rock that, by all means, go for it. Uh, but I think a lot of people will feel a little self-conscious about it, and it's probably better to just go with something else for those people. So you got two models here. I don't usually recommend this base model, and the only reason is because it's 128 gigs of SSD storage. Um, in my other video, I didn't even mention this one, but if you really don't need storage, you can cheap out and get this one, but I'm gonna use this one for sake of comparison. Now, I'm actually gonna choose the gold color just to kind of differentiate these, just so it's easier for you guys. Now, here we go. We've got 1.6 gigahertz dual core, eighth gen, Intel Core i5 processor with turbo boost up to 3.6 gigahertz. Keep in mind, this is an eighth gen Intel Core i5. Just remember that for a minute. All right, then we got Retina display, eight gigs of LP DDR3 memory, which is low power memory, which means it's better on the battery overall because this thing has amazing battery life, which I will get into in a second, but it's not as powerful as DDR4. 256 gig storage, Intel graphics, nothing nothing crazy there, touch ID, yada, yada, you guys can read that. All right, so memory. It's 2018, almost 2019. I personally would always choose 16 gigs of RAM, but again, I do stuff that probably a lot of you guys don't. If you are a casual user, you might just wanna go with eight, but for $200 more, you can get 16. I don't think you can upgrade this. Please note, memory is built into the computer. Basically, it's soldered onto the motherboard. If you think you may need more in the future, consider upgrading at time of purchase. All right, storage. Personally, I go with 512, but that's up to you. And look at that, we're already at almost $1,800. Especially after tax, it's gonna be about 1850. Now for MacBook Pros here, 13 inch, that's what we're looking at here. We've got 2.3 gigahertz, 2.3 gigahertz, but then we're like, wait a minute, why are there so many models here? Well, if you look closely, these are the seventh gen Intel Core i5 processors. This one is the eighth gen, and this one is the eighth gen. Basically, the ones with the touch bar are the newer ones on this page. Now this one starts at 1800, which is pretty much what this one's spec'd out to. So what do we get differently? Well, we get a 2.3 gigahertz quad core eighth gen i5 with turbo boost up to 3.8 gigahertz, an Intel Iris Plus graphics, much better graphics card, eight gigs of LPDDR3 memory, 256 gig storage, retina display, true tone, touch bar and touch ID, four Thunderbolt three ports for literally the same price as this one. Now, the difference is this one only has eight gigs of RAM and 256 gig storage. So let's select this one just for fun here. And you guys can see, you can even bump this up more. Uh, you can bump up the RAM if you want. So if I was gonna spec this out, I'd probably choose this and I'd probably choose this. And then we're at 2200. So the MacBook Pro versus MacBook Air, um, this is a big debate and these are both 13 inch machines. If you have the extra cash, it is definitely worth it to go up to the MacBook Pro, in my opinion, if you do professional work, video editing, hardcore web browsing, like you have like tons of tabs open like I do. Like I've got tons here and I've got way more in Google Chrome right now. I need the extra processing power for things like video editing and the extra RAM for multiple tabs. Let's go over some of the pros and cons to kind of help you guys narrow your choices. So for the MacBook Air, the pros, it's cheaper, it's lighter, it's more portable, and it has more color choices. So I think those are kind of the biggest uh, pros for the MacBook Air. I think, you know, the gold color is something that a lot of girls are gonna look at and they're gonna say, hey, I kind of want this laptop, but, and unless they're doing something intense on their laptop, honestly, I think it's a good choice for a lot of them. But at the same time, you can spend just a little bit more money and get something much more powerful. This is a quad core, eighth gen Intel i5. This is a dual core. Going from two to four cores makes a big difference, trust me. My old laptop was a dual core MacBook Pro, 
and this new 2018 MacBook Pro is six cores, Intel Core i9. So big difference. Um, you definitely wanna usually choose the quad core. I, I can't really understand a lot of people buying this dual core one, unless, like I said, you do little things like web browsing and stuff. The Pro for, another Pro for the MacBook Air, you get much more battery time. Um, but obviously this comes because the processor is less powerful. So you kind of got to weigh, do you want better battery life or do you want more processing power? Now the MacBook Pro is no slouch. You can almost definitely get through a full college day of work with the MacBook Pro. It has a really nice battery. I use MacBook Pros all through university. I can't think of one time I had to plug my MacBook in. Everyone there with PCs, they always had their cords laying all over the place, plugged in here and there because they could get like an hour of use out of it. So by the next class, they had to plug it in. My MacBook Pro, I never had that issue. Now some cons for the MacBook Air. Uh, much less power, like I said, smaller screen because you cannot go to the 15 inch model if that's what you like, and no touch bar. Now, most people don't care about the touch bar. Most people probably are not looking for a 15 inch laptop here anyway, but I wanted to point those out. Now let's talk about the MacBook Pro here for a minute. Some pros for it. It's much more powerful. This is a much more powerful and capable machine. Uh, it's got a bigger screen option for the 15 inch and it's got the touch bar. Now, real quickly here, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna choose the 15 inch because I can't keep mentioning the screen size and not mention the price. The price goes up quite a bit. I maxed mine out, I think it was like $3,700. Let me just double check that here. Yeah, it was about 3,500 and then uh, plus taxes and everything. It was expensive. Of course, I got the education discount, which I think is not running anymore. Um, so I got some free beats and a little bit of money off. So it ended up being about 3,500 total after taxes and everything, which is a lot of money for a computer. So I just had to mention the price with the 15 inch, it is much more, but it is what it is, guys. Now some cons for the MacBook Pro. It's expensive, it's slightly heavier, and you get less battery time. Now, I do have to mention that, yes, it's more expensive, but you're getting better internals, and it's heavier, yes, uh, by not, not by a whole lot, but if you are a college student or high school student, you might want to opt for the 13 inch MacBook Pro. It is a little bit more portable. The battery time is kind of negligible for a lot of people, but I have to mention it because the MacBook Pro simply gets less battery life. Now this is probably not gonna make or break anything, but I found it interesting when I was going through the specs of these computers here, both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, even the one I spent $3,600 on, they both come with a 720p FaceTime HD camera, not 1080p. Personally, I think the camera's fine for what it's worth, but I have to mention that, I mean, Apple, I know you're sneaking this in there, but bump that up to 1080p, please. For those of us that like to Skype and FaceTime people that are not always with us, that would be a huge plus if they could do that. But I have to mention that here. Now, I know I mentioned this in one of my other videos, but I think I forgot it in the last video. The 2018 iPad Pro beats out the 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro by a little bit in some of the Geekbench scores. Um, just a couple of them, just the single score here. So bear that in mind, the iPad Pro is super limited overall, um, but it does have crazy performance. So just to give you guys kind of a baseline here, I guess my MacBook Pro gets uh, 5,344 for the single core and 22,552 for the multi-core score. And so keep this number in mind, 5,000 and 18,000. The new MacBook Air late 2018 only gets 4,000 uh, single core and 7,600 or 7,700 multi-core. So that is a huge difference um, between these. No, we're not directly comparing, you know, a $3,700 laptop with a $1,300 one, but just keep that in mind. The other MacBook Pros are also very capable, even the 13 inch ones. They're not quite as high as this, but they're much higher than 7,600. So keep that in mind, guys. I know Geekbench scores don't matter that much, but it does kind of show you the raw power of the machine. So to wrap it up, uh, to kind of give you guys an idea of what I would do if I were in your situation, if you guys do not have a whole lot of money to spend uh, on one of these, obviously the 15 inch MacBook Pro is probably out of the question for a lot of you guys. Um, so you're probably gonna want the 13 inch. And then it comes, if you're watching this, you're probably looking at the 13 inch anyway. I would stay far away from either of these two 13 inch MacBook Pros simply because they're using last generation's chip. They're cheaper, yes, but you get what you pay for here. These new ones are a little bit more power efficient and also more powerful overall. So I say if you have the extra cash um, and you're kind of just 50-50 on each, I would go for the MacBook Pro. However, if you are definitely on the lighter end of things and you don't do a whole lot of professional work, you don't edit videos, you don't do hardcore audio editing, anything like that, you don't play any games like from the Mac App Store, I think the MacBook Air is a good fit. 
Now, if I had to choose one, you know, that I was going to have for the next three to five years, I would pick the MacBook Pro. I'm sure the MacBook Air will hold up just fine. If you want to watch more 4K or HD content on YouTube, uh, you can imagine the dual core processor MacBook Air is going to lag a little bit behind. And also, that's another thing I should mention here. I thought I did, but I didn't. These are both dual core. This is quad core. So don't even consider these. Like I said, just don't don't look at them. They're not worth your time or money. Uh, start with this one. So if you can stomach spending at least $1,800, check out the MacBook Pro. If you can't, the MacBook Air is for you as well. It comes with the new 8th gen chip, but they are dual core. So there are trade-offs for everything in life, guys. The main thing is get something that you're going to be happy with. Don't cheap out just because you know you don't have the money. Pick up an extra job, save up your money, get something that you are going to love and enjoy using every single day. At the end of the day, none of these things are very cheap and you really want something that you're going to be happy with. Life's too short to have a computer that you're not happy with. So pick something that you like and that's going to put a smile on your face every day. I think that'll probably make it worth the money. So that's all I got for this video, guys. If you have any questions at all, leave them down below. Uh, I like to help you guys out to pick the best computers for you. That's all I got. If you liked it, hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.